Today we'll be making prosciutto wrapped shrimp with a delicious whiskey barbecue sauce. Perfect for an entree or for an hors d'oeuvre at a party. Okay, so to make our prosciutto wrapped shrimp with the whiskey barbecue sauce, the first thing we want to do, step one, is to make our barbecue sauce. And I've got, uh, this is actually a large onion. It calls for a medium onion, so I'm going to cut this in half and I'm going to peel it and uh, dice it up. You can save the other part for a later time. And hopefully this doesn't make me cry because there's so many techniques out there. Uh, somebody said put it in the microwave. I think Duff Gold, uh, Goldman on Food Network said to put the onion in the microwave and it won't cook it for like 30 seconds and bring it out and it's not supposed to make you cry <laughs> when you chop it. And then I've heard keep your mouth open. They've got these crazy glasses you can buy. I don't think anything ever really works. My mama always said that a hot onion was because the, the uh, farmer that grew it had a hot temper. And I thought that was kind of funny. But who knows, it's probably a little old wives tale that they've been told over the years. But it does make for interesting conversation. So I like to cut my onion in half further. It just helps me a lot. And I've tried this. This doesn't work very well for me. And there are gadgets out there that chop onions for you. So if you don't like chopping them, or again, uh, use your supermarket. They have diced onions already chopped up. Cry-free zone. It works every time. <laughs> As you can see, this is why I never uh, claim to be a great dicer. I get the job done, but I do this and then I'll run my knife back through it. And I'm using a white onion. Uh, basically, it's, you know, you have red onions, yellow onions, white. Uh, yellow are a little sweeter. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I think it would, with this barbecue sauce, you probably could use any of the onions if you wanted to. So we're gonna uh, turn our skillet on here to about medium. And we wanna put a tablespoon of olive oil about. And we're gonna add all those onions uh, with some rosemary and cook those down. Now, I need to heat this pan first and then we'll be doing that. And while we're doing that, let's go ahead and uh, chop our rosemary. Rosemary mm -hmm, smells wonderful. It comes out of my garden. Now, it is very strong, as my husband can attest to. We have a chicken story about some rosemary that we'll tell you about sometime. But anyway, <laughs> getting back to this, I just pull off what I think is going to be about. And you just need a teaspoon. Fresh is always good. I mean, you can use the dried if you don't have this. I love the smell of it. It just smells so good. I think we need a little more here, so let's pull off a few more leaves. Most people just strip it like that. And if you have an allergy to this or just really cannot stand rosemary, you can leave it out. That's going to be perfect right there. That's our teaspoon. So let's check our skillet. You can usually tell. You'll see how it's starting to shimmer. That means that skillet is getting really, really hot and it's ready to take those. This handy dandy tool works so great. Well, we're going to get some sizzle, that's for sure. I'm using a gas oven or gas stove, so you, you really, if you're familiar with them, you have to be real careful because they stuff burns pretty easily. You just have to control your heat. All right, and our rosemary. It's looking really good. It's a total of about six minutes, and I think we're right at about three minutes right now. And you can see how they're starting to brown, and that's what you want. Just make sure you keep stirring because you do have oil in this, but again, especially with a gas stove, it, it can burn easily, and you don't want that. Okay, 
We're right there. That's, you see how brown and pretty they are. We're ready to add the rest of our ingredients for our barbecue sauce. And I have two tablespoons of whiskey. And that will violently pop up because obviously it's an alcohol. Oh, goodness, it smells so good. We have two tablespoons of brown sugar. Kind of break that up a little bit if it's got a few lumps in it. We have a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. And we've got a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. And we're going to add some uh, garlic powder. Probably about a teaspoon. You can never have too much garlic. And we're letting that cook down for just Okay, a now we're ready to add a half a cup, and this is prepared barbecue sauce. Any brand you choose is fine. Get that kind of stirred in there. Like I said, all this is going to be going into a food processor to, uh, to break it down. And we've got a dash of hot sauce. Depending on how, that's more than one dash. Depends on how much hot you like it. And I would just taste it. Dash of Worcestershire. Always good. And then we've got salt and pepper. And there's no measurement on that. It's just eyeball it. Now, I am careful with salt. It's probably about a half a teaspoon of salt. Because you can always add more, but you can't take it away. We're going to cook this just for just a little few more minutes, and then we're going to put it in the food processor to uh, puree it. We're going to puree this in a food processor. I'm using a mini food processor. It's just more convenient and easy to clean up. I don't know if all of it's going to fit, so we're going to, we're going to check. But just load her up. Try not to make a mess. And fire away. <laughs> Just breaking up those onions, just make it smooth. So we pureed this um, barbecue sauce, and it has a few little tiny chunks in it, but it's pureed for the most part, which is what you want. But I want to talk about cross-contamination. Uh, some of you may or may not be familiar with that. Um, because I'm going to brush this barbecue sauce on raw shrimp, we were also going to have save some for a dipping sauce where you don't want to obviously brush on a raw seafood, which you're also going to dip in when it's cooked. So I'm going to pour some out into a serving dish that we'll use for dipping for later, and we're going to just use this with a pastry brush out of here to coat the shrimp. So let me go ahead and remove that blade. It's always dangerous. Okay, so we're ready now to prepare our shrimp. Um, and wrap them with prosciutto. But first we need to, uh, you get a big bowl and obviously I am using um, extra large or jumbo I believe. That's how big they are before cooking and these have been peeled, deveined and tails are on um, but all the work's been done for you so all you got to do is do whatever the next step is on your recipe. So this is usually 21 to 25 shrimp for uh, that size package and you need about a tablespoon of olive oil in this bowl with them and we're going to salt and pepper them. Again, it just eyeball it because that's the best thing to do sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to mix them all in, make sure they're all on there and then we're going to uh, wrap each of these shrimp in some prosciutto. Okay, so we're ready to wrap, wrap these up and I'll give you a little bit of education about prosciutto while we're, we're sitting here doing this. And by the way, I'm using, um, it's about a, a half inch piece of it and I have cut them into slender pieces just enough to wrap around it and I'm going to secure these with a toothpick too because we're going to be flipping them in the oven so you want to make sure that those 
they stay on there. Uh, prosciutto is an Italian dry cured ham that's actually thinly sliced and it's served uncooked. Uh, this style is called prosciutto crudo in Italian and is distinguished from your cooked ham, which is called prosciutto cotto. Now that we have all of our shrimp wrapped with our prosciutto, the next step is going to be brushing them with barbecue sauce that we made earlier. Okay, and remember I had it in this food processor and I have some over there for dipping uh, afterwards. So here we go. Now I'm just using a little pastry brush so that we can get it nice and coated on there. And I do want to talk about the oven has been preheating at 400 degrees and we'll be putting these in and roasting them for five minutes on one side. We'll take them out and we'll be flipping them over and we'll apply more barbecue sauce to the other side and then we'll roast them for five more minutes in the oven and that's it. Let's turn these guys over and, and do the other side. And what we're gonna have to do, unfortunately, we're gonna have to Go ahead and take those toothpicks out as we turn them over because they're going to be too humped up if we don't. And our last little shrimp, we're done. So we're ready to put these back in the oven for another five minutes and we should be good to go. Okay, so we're going to pull these guys out and get them over here and plate them up. They smell wonderful and they look wonderful. Okay, so let's plate these guys up. This is a beautiful presentation. It would be wonderful for a party, for hors d'oeuvres, or a main dish, and you could serve it up with uh, a nice green salad or um, pasta. Would be lovely with it, or rice. So let's get these guys on here. You know, anybody that likes shrimp is probably going to love this recipe. Just a minute here. So here we are. And you remember the barbecue sauce that we left? It was perfect around that. And then some limes. Always go great. And some parsley. Sprinkle that over the top of the guys. there you have a beautiful, wonderful, lovely dinner. Thank you for watching uh, our show today and make sure and subscribe to our channel if you're enjoying what you're seeing and make sure you uh, hit the bell icon for notifications when we upload a new video and ciao for now. <laughs>